Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. of ancient Japan with their samurai swords would have known the central character in today's story, a dim figure from the past tenuously attached to life, to being, to sanity. This is the man we meet in today's program, The Gaunt Man. We'll let the mystery unfold for you in a moment, but first, young men, when you volunteer for service in the United States Army today, you can rest assured that your best talents and natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Yes, today's modern army fits the right men to the right jobs, and real merit is recognized with faster promotions and more opportunities. Now, more than ever before, men with above average ability are finding better jobs and more important assignments in the United States Army. Why not investigate an army and enlistment for yourself right now and find out just what you stand to gain? Full information is available at your local United States Army recruiting station. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Gaunt Man. Tokyo, Japan, that's where I work. I'm in headquarters company of Central Command of the United States Army Forces Far East. The fellows call me Gil Hui. But my name's Galhoey, Master Sergeant Tim Galhoey. Well, sir, being in Tokyo is great. I like being here. I have a flock of real intelligent soldiers working with me. Real intelligent. Radio specialists, announcers, scriptwriters, linguists, translators, almost everything. So when something happens, I'm not too surprised. Yesterday, I was working over a report, and this happened. Here's the mail. And what a load. Strength figures show a slight increase in personnel. You're all right. Uh, toss me the company mail, huh? Yeah, I think there's one here for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Here. Yeah. Great jumping Texas horn toads. Dowdy. Private Dowdy, front and center. Yeah. Oh, look, Sergeant, I cleaned around my area twice this morning. Read this. I... Uh, holy smokes. Yeah, holy smokes. How'd this happen? Well, uh, it's a long story. Do I have to tell you? Well, as a matter of fact, you don't. Just, uh, just tell the captain. <laughs> but being as I have certain jobs to be done once in a while... Uh, it... Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, it started at the uh, Takadazuka Ballet. The what? The Takadazuka Ballet. You know, the Japanese Follies. Oh, I get it. Geisha girls, singing, yeah, dancing. That's right. yeah. Well, I bought two tickets, one for Corporal Matthews. Anyway, we got there pretty early, and that's when it all started. Good seats, huh? Yeah, except that my knees touched the rails almost. I never knew I was so tall until I hit Japan. They're still good seats, the first row balcony. Hey, incidentally, this is gonna be great from what I hear. Colors and the kimonos will be out of this world. Yeah. Hey, I've got an idea. If we could get some real close shots, they'd be collector's items. So we got half an hour. Let's ask the manager if he'll let us take a few flash pictures backstage. Look, they, they don't want the American army backstage. Two men, not the whole army. I bet very few people have asked to do it, or even thought of it. Come on, let's go. Uh, you are the first Americans to want to come back here. Uh, please make yourself at home. Well, thank you. If I may say so, these are very clever gadgets for changing scenery. Yes, we have been doing it for a long time. When you are still chasing Indians, 
We were changing scenery. <laughs> That's right, in fact. Oh, my friend here says that he saw an American working back here. Ah, yeah. oh, yes. Uh, we have a foreigner working for us. He is an excellent craftsman. Understands what we want. Well, isn't that a bit strange, sir? I mean, uh, an American designing Japanese scenery? Uh, indeed it is. And uh, this man is very uh, strange. Uh, we call him Arodo. It means the gaunt man. Well, that certainly fits. The skinniest man I've ever seen outside of a circus. I wonder if we could talk to him, sir. Uh, certainly. You go over to the third door. You see it? Uh, yes, sir. Arodo is in there doing some painting. Well, thanks a lot, Thank sir. Thank you. Why do you want to see him, Joe? This is a natural. Right in the middle of a Japanese extravaganza, we find an American who understands their art. They call him the gaunt man, the boot. That's right out of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Third door, he said. Yeah. There's two. Look, this guy is probably an ex-soldier who married a Japanese girl and settled down here. That's oh, all. Oh, maybe. Oh, this is three. Let's go in. Uh, we're just looking around, sir. Go right ahead with your work. In my drawing, notice how the trees bend down to thank the water. I think he's nutty. Let's get back to our seats. Pipe down. Yes, yes, they do. They look really artistic. You're an artist by profession? Artist? If this is art, I am an artist. Well, I, I mean, were you trained as an artist? When the sun comes up, these trees lift their heads to the sky. He's screwing yeah, That's that. true. Did you go to art school in the United States? Look, if you please, this must be finished. I must show that trees are grateful to the eternal streams flowing from Fujisan. Oh, well, thank you, sir. I'll come see you again. Perhaps I can show you how I paint a mountain that is worshipping Buddha. Uh -huh. Thanks very much for letting us walk. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Of all the nutty characters. Oh, pipe down. That fellow's in trouble. Trouble? He's just slightly touched, that's all. He thinks he's a Japanese Rembrandt. Something's wrong. And I'm going to find out what it is. Uh, hello, Tota. Uh, more pictures? No, sir. No pictures this time. I want to ask you a few questions about the Gaunt Man. Yes, uh, I knew you would. You did? Yes. Uh, you are curious. You sent something? I, I think there's a story somewhere, maybe even a tragedy. Uh, soldier. You are intelligent man. <laughs> Just imaginative, I think. Uh, there is a story. A prominent Japanese businessman asked me to hire this man. Do you think that there's a mystery behind this man? If I were an American and I met a man who acted like the gaunt one, yes, I think I would go to this address. What? Uh, ten? Ichi Kom Kyoto K Kyoto. I will go there. Uh, you will forget where you got that address, please. My friend is too prominent to offend. You understand? I understand, sir. And many thanks. <laughs> I went to Kyoto with Corporal Frank Matthews. Frank didn't want any part of tracing the Gaunt Man, but he did want to see Kyoto, a fabulous city of a thousand shrines and hundreds of temples. Well, we're lucky. Place is near the station. Nice house. Yeah, it's an old one. Look at the carving. Now, shall I knock again, do you think? No, I think I heard something. May I help you? Wow, what beauty. Oh, we're looking for uh, Mr. Gomi. He... Is my father. He is away now. I am very sorry. Could I help you? Oh, perhaps you can. Uh, if you'll excuse the remark, you certainly speak good English. At Kyoto University, English is a must. I have had four years and two before that in what you call high school. I see. <laughs> well, I was going to ask your father about an American that they call the Gaunt Man. He works backstage at... Is something wrong? Uh, I am quite all right. Uh, please, won't you come in? Well, if we're not interrupting. Oh, no. Over here, please. I am 
Midori Suzuki. And I'm Private Joe Doherty, and this is Corporal Frank Matthews. Oh? I am glad to know you both. Thank you. This is certainly a lovely home. The little garden just inside the front entrance, is that a Kyoto custom? In old houses, yes. This house is very old. We will have tea in just a moment. Arodo, is, is he well? Oh, I don't know exactly how to answer that. We only saw him a few times. Uh, well, a little cloudy, sort of. Yes, I know. Could you tell me something about him, Miss Midori? I... I think the gaunt one will always be rather strange, foggy, cloudy. I have the feeling that there's a story connected with him. I feel that maybe I can help him some way. No, no one can help him. Well, if you'd tell us about his background, we could try. You do not understand, Private Doherty. He lived with us for a while. Everything has been tried. But Father had to send him away. He said that I had too much pity for Oroto. He said, and this is very true, that pity is too close to, to love. Could you tell me how the gaunt man got here in the first place? Yes. It is very vivid in my mind. Near the end of the unfortunate war, we were driving from Tokyo to Kyoto. Kyoto was not being bombed, you see. We have always been grateful for that. Of course. Anyway, we were on the open road, and we could see the shell bursts of the anti-aircraft shells and the airplanes coming over, mm -hmm. going north to Tokyo. Suddenly, we saw an airplane get hit. It fluttered like a hurt moth, then it drifted down like a burning piece of paper. It fell to earth not far ahead of us on the road. We drove on, talking about it. And I think I was the first to see the man climbing out of a ditch. His face was badly bruised, mm. and his clothes were ripped, and he staggered as he walked. He still had a parachute dragging behind him. We picked him up and brought him here to Kyoto and found that he could not be moved. And that was the gaunt man? Yes. That was the gaunt man. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Gaunt Man. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Ever stop to think about the meaning of a military salute? Soldiers call it a sign of recognition between men of an honorable profession. Some historians say the military salute began when knights in armor raised their helmet visors with their right hands to show friendliness. In our time, it's come to mean, among soldiers, a gesture of respect, not just for the individual himself, but for the uniform he wears and the nation it represents. That's worth remembering. Next time you see a soldier in the uniform of the United States Army, keep in mind what his uniform means. It's a visible symbol that he wears proudly if he's a good soldier. A sign that he's begun to master one of the most honorable professions in men's history. A sign that he's joined the good company of generations of American soldiers who have done man-sized jobs in the defense of our beliefs. He's a man to respect, and he deserves your salute. More, if you can qualify, he deserves your help, because our country needs more men to stand beside him. Visit your United States Army recruiting station, first chance you get, and find out how you can help him with a tough job he's doing well. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. Now we present the second act of The Gaunt Man. So, Doherty, the way I get it so far, the Japanese army didn't raise a fuss with Midori and her father? Well, I, I think he was a high-ranking officer. Well, don't keep me on tent pegs. Go on. Let's see. Uh, Corporal Matthews and I sat there listening to Midori's story of how they had tried to discover who the Gaunt Man was. You know, I wonder what would happen if, if our gaunt man saw somebody who, who knew him in the days before he fell out of the sky. Hey. I beg your pardon. Hey, what? I'm beginning to get an idea. Camp Otsu must have a Signal Corps film library. If it does, and if the place where you, Midori, picked up the gaunt man is near here, yes. we have a chance. Oh. Maybe only 50-50, but we have a chance. The place is not very far. But I do not understand. Frank, we're going over to Camp Otsu. Huh? And fast. 
We've got to talk to the non-com who runs the film library where they store army films. Well, Maybe to the soldier who checks out the projectors. Well, who wants to see a movie now? Oh, it's not what you think. I think we have a chance to clear up the mystery of the Gaunt Man. You... Do you really think you could? Well, Midori san I'm going to give it a good try. Well, just so long as we don't run over our leave time. Oh, you won't run over your leave time. Not if we work fast. And Midori san could you get in touch with your father quickly? Yes. Yes, I am sure I can. He's near Tokyo. Yes. Well, tell your father that two American soldiers think they can establish the identity of the Gaunt Man if he'll bring him back here to Kyoto. Yes. I know he won't want to do it. Well, maybe you have some influence. Make it strong about the chance we have of finding out who he is. Will your father try, do you think? I think that if my father realizes that it means much to me, and I think he does already, and that there is a chance he will bring him back. Good. Frank and I'll go to Camp Otsu. And Midori, please, start trying to contact your father right now. Reese, be seated. We can talk freely. Harodo is sleeping. He has been working very hard. He loves his work. Now, Midori-san tells me you have a plan? Yes, sir, we do. Uh, if you'll excuse the rush, we must work fast. I'm on leave. And we've got to use the films at the time arranged for, sir. Films? Yes, sir. They fit in with the idea. And then uh, we might need a car. A uh, taxi would do. I have a car. Good. Uh, sir... Do you think that we could disturb Arodo? Uh, time is going short. I think it will be all right. Uh, one thing, we must not make his condition any worse. That I will not permit. Father, is not anything worth a try? He cannot get much worse. He might just possibly get better. These are his countrymen. I think we should help. Yes. I suppose so. Fine, sir. Let's go to Camp Otsu as soon as we can. They call this the screening room. It's a small theater, as you see. The army holds classes here, and the men are shown various army films. Oh, Frank, uh, how many different reels did the sergeant give you? Three. One from the Korean War and two old ones from World War II. Uh -huh. All taken in an airplane? That's what the tag says. Midori-san, do you think he's ready for this? I do not know exactly what you are going to do. Whatever it is, I want you to try it. If there is even just a little possibility, it will help him. He has not changed in years. Look at his eyes. I know. I've always thought of them as haunted. Yes, they are haunted. He is haunted by fringe memories that he cannot grasp. Uh, the first film is ready. Let her roll. I looked from one to the other in the half-darkness. They were all leaning forward, tense, even Corporal Matthews. This was silent film, but it was powerful. It had been taken inside an airplane during the war in Korea. We could see the tenseness in the faces of the gunners, and sometimes we could see glimpses of the rough terrain below in the towering mountains. And then the film was over. The lights went on. We all turned and looked. And it had no effect on the gaunt man at all. After all that, no effect at all? Oh. What about this letter? You're getting me confused. Well, there's some more. I stopped because that was a disappointing thing. 20 minutes of aerial combat and no effect. Well, what happened then? Well, Mr. Gomi got restless and wanted to leave. Then good old Matt saved the day for me. He'd gone back to where the projectionist was working the movie machine. Midori was uncertain. Now we were with a bomber crew over Germany in World War II. Again, the men were sober and intent, and again, Midori watched the gaunt man's profile closely. The airplane began to toss and swerve. We could see past the pilot out into the sky that was dotted with shell bursts, small tight balls of wicked black smoke, and then great clouds with flame flickering inside. The airplane held straight, flew right through the bursts, and then it rocked violently as bursts came closer. Oh! Oh, it was too much for him. Frank, the light. He has fainted. I was afraid of this. Harodo, can you hear me? Yes, my door is in my, my head hurts. Now we're really in the soup. Not yet, not quite. Look at his face. It is like paper. It has not 
helped at all. Well, it was just a gamble, Midori son. It was just a gamble. Well, look, how about the other part? You said something about needing a car. Oh, no, I don't know now. Well, we're supposed to get to the spot where he came down, right? Yeah, that's what I'd planned. Well, let's go then. Mr. Gomi, let's get over to the road you were on the day he came down. <laughs> This was the road that you came down to when you jumped from the blazing airplane. All right. And this is the man who stopped his car and picked you up near here. This man and this girl. But please, he looks tortured. Let him try. This is the last pitch. Now, Joe thinks he's close to something, maybe, maybe close to remembering. You were in a bomber. It, it was flying low. You flew through anti-aircraft fire. No, no, uh, just no. like you saw in that movie. No, 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 it, it was all around you, but you flew through it, just like the airplane in the movie. And then you were hit. The airplane burst into flames. Uh, this uh, is too much please, for Please, Midori-san. He must finish it. He's trying to remember. Look at his face. Yes, daughter. Uh, I, Something is happening. I, his face shows it. You parachuted uh, I. You were the only one who managed to do it. Floated down just about here. You hit hard. Very hard. <laughs> he doesn't remember. I was afraid of this. Joe, you're not going to give up now. He's trying to remember. Look. Why not, why not have him walk along the road and have Midori and her father pick him up? Yeah, we've tried everything else. Midori, would you mind trying just one more thing? What? If you will, drive back a bit and then stop and pick him up. Uh. Frank and I will get out of sight and we'll start him along the road. I never thought Mr. Gomi would go along with this last-minute attempt, but he looked at Midori's face and he climbed into his car without a word and drove off. We waited a minute and then started the gaunt man walking down the road. It wasn't hard to do. He was dazed and I felt sorry for him, but I had to finish what I started. The car came up the road as we walked towards it. Frank and I then stayed behind him. The car stopped. I saw them talking. The gaunt man climbed in slowly, too slowly, I thought. And then they drove on towards us. Well, Frank, that's that. Well, let's see what happens first. I can tell you already. He's probably asleep. Midori is crying. Private! Private Dorothy! He says he remembers something! Wait a minute, wait a minute. This suspense is killing me. Get to the ending. Well, after Midori called out to us, Frank and I ran over to the car. The gaunt man was sitting there quietly enough. He was pale, but, well, he was always pale. Midori was smiling. Sort of a wobbly smile, but it was a smile. And her father had his arm around the gaunt man's shoulder. Well, I didn't waste any time. I started right... I think he is remembering. Let me talk to him. Sir, do you remember anything at all? I, I, I don't know. I... I think so. Well, do you remember when the anti-aircraft guns began firing at you? Do you remember being in an airplane? Yes, I, I was in an airplane. And the ak, -AK hit you, didn't it? Yes. There was anti-aircraft fire all around. And there was an explosion. A and then you found an exit. A side door was blown off. And you jumped. No, no. no the, the airplane began to fall. And I fell out. Well, when you hit, you hit hard. Yes, yes very hard. I saw a tremendous flash of light. The wind blew me so that I, I hit the ground with my head and shoulders, and I was dragged. Oh, oh, his memory is flooding back. This girl and this man. Now do you remember them? Don't overdo it, Joe. He's shaking. I'm getting close to it now. This girl and this man. They were driving in a car like this, on this very road, just about here. Yes. I remember it. It all comes back. It, it seems so very long ago. It was so long ago. I wanted an eyewitness story of a bombing grade, but I, I, I couldn't get permission. They, they didn't want correspondence on the airplane because there were too many being shot down. I managed to slip onto one ship that I knew was going on a raid, and they found me after it was too late to turn back. The, 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 the pilot... I, I remember clearly now. He, he was a nice fellow. He insisted I wear a parachute. He, he said he was going in low. You 
do not need to continue now if it is hard for you. No, no, I, I must talk. It's, it's sweeping back to me. I, I remember that I had forgotten my identification cards. All I had was a notebook and a fountain pen. And it, it, it's getting clearer now. I, I, I'm sure of it all. It, 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 it all connects. But why couldn't I remember before? Well, sir, I guess it took the shock of living part of it again. Whatever the cause... I'm grateful, soldier. Oh, this is great. And now the important question. Who are you? Yes. Who are you? I am Francis Conley of Montreal, Canada. I represent... And I guess I should say that I did represent a chain of newspapers. At last. Oh, this is wonderful. Soldiers, you have done a very wonderful thing. As we watched this man's rebirth, we knew why the American Army and its investigators couldn't find out who this man was. He was a Canadian. No one knew he had even been aboard the plane. Not even his own correspondent friends. Well, Private Dowdy, I asked for the story and I got the story. I must say it was a good one, too. That explains the letter, all right. I couldn't imagine why the Canadian government wanted you to report to the liaison officer of the Canadian Army attached to this headquarters. Now, the captain's late. You'd better get back to the barracks and get into a fresh uniform. There'll be a lot of pictures taken when they pin on that medal. Young men, today's United States Army is made up of skilled technicians and specialists who have learned their jobs in the world's finest military technical schools. And now, the Army is offering you even greater opportunities to join this elite group of young men and serve your country and yourself at the same time. If you're a high school graduate of service age, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and make application for the Reserved for You training program, stating your preferences of branch and training course. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you're awarded a letter that guarantees you a reserved seat in the technical training course of your choice. Now all this takes place before you enlist, and it places you under no obligation whatsoever. Then, after you enlist and have your basic training, you're enrolled in your school and begin your career as a highly skilled Army technician. We suggest you find out about it right away by visiting your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talking it over with the friendly people there. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>